irony. The expression of one's meaning by using language that normally signifies the opposite, typically for humorous or emphatic effect. I love irony when it comes to these reports. Let's face it, the police force provides much irony, but it's not just the police who we report on on this channel. And when I see something as ironic as this, I have to report it. 45-year-old Sherry Spencer from Bubwith, East Yorkshire, worked within HM Prison and Probation Service at the highest level, often bragging to friends that she had a, the ear of the former Prime Minister Boris Johnson and that she was just too down from the Prime Minister in her field and had meetings with Boris Johnson, who she spoke of as a friend. She was a project manager in a prison and probation service director of strategy and performance and was responsible for prison reform. However, all came crashing down around her when she was jailed last week at Hull Crown Court for what was described by the judge as the worst case of coercive behaviour they had ever seen. Cherie Spencer was sentenced to four years for controlling and co coercive behaviour towards her husband, along with several assaults. Although it seems there were way more than several assaults over their 16 years that they were married. The court was told that within months of the pair becoming a couple back in 2000, her husband Richard Spencer was on the receiving end of her violent outbursts, which were said to have occurred both when she was drunk and when she was sober. It's said that on one occasion she shit on the floor and forced Richard to clean it up, you know, to give you an idea of how disgusting this woman is. He suffered multiple assaults which left him with bruises and scratches that he had to cover up before leaving the house. However, even though he was going through this, he had the clarity of mind to record, both visually and in audio, many of the attacks over the years that he suffered, emailing them to himself, then deleting the recording and sent emails so Sherry couldn't find them. Sherry's abuse only ended in June 2021 when a concerned welfare worker called police to their home. Richard then went on to provide 43 images of his bruised face taken on different dates. Richard told the court that although he was bigger and physically stronger than his petite wife, he did not fight back when she began to attack him, saying that he almost became immune to the physical abuse she meted out, even though she would cause him pain by sinking her teeth into him and biting him. He said that the mental scars are what would have the most lasting effect. Richard said, from September 2000 to June 2021, Cherie subjected me to hundreds of physically, mentally and emotionally abusive episodes perpetrated in a pattern of behaviour going back over 20 years, almost half my life. I have become resigned to the fact that I will never fully recover from her abuse and that it will have a permanent damaging impact on mine and my family's life. Cherie's abuse towards me evolved and escalated over time. She used repeated acts of physical assault, threats, verbal abuse and humiliation to punish and exercise control over me. The abuse was hidden from the outside world, including friends and family. She manipulated me into believing that I was a responsible and willing participant in the abuse. She remorselessly proclaimed that I deserved to be punished and that it was a justifiable consequence of me disappointing her in some way. Little by little, I lost my independence and willpower and just accepted that was how my life was going to be. I complied with Cherie's demands and she controlled most aspects of my everyday life, including things like what activities I could participate in and when, which room I could sleep in and even which toilet I could use. Gradually I became isolated from family and friends and I was left deep in debt causing me to feel trapped. He told the court, I'm physically bigger and stronger than Cherie so I could restrain her if the pain became unbearable. However, I could only hold her for so long and when the time came to let her go, she would be even angrier and the injuries she would inflict afterwards were always worse. After a while, I learned to cover my face with my hands and curl up into a fetal position to try and avoid sustaining any visible facial injuries so that I could still take my children to school and nursery. In April 2021, Cherie beat Richard so hard with a wine bottle it was said to have permanently disfigured his ear. Richard said he needed hospital treatment, which Cherie responded to by calling him a pussy. She looked up YouTube videos on how to drain blood from the ear by puncturing it with a knife. When Richard refused, she told him that if he used his name at the hospital, she would stop him coming back to the family home and ordered him to use her brother's name. And he did, as he was told, as he was booked into A&E, fearing the reprisals that would happen if he did not. 
Judge Kate Rayfield told Cherie, this is the worst case of controlling and coercive behavior I have seen. In one of these recordings, it is clear you are defecated on the floor. Your husband can be heard scrubbing while you are heard to say to him, I made you do that. All I asked you to do was go to the shop. I watched as you spat in his face time and time again and called him bitch, tiny cock and skank and insulted members of his family. You whispered in his face in the most sinister way, shouted demands and instructions at him. Get the fucking chicken on, get to the fucking shop and warning him you will learn. By your actions, you intended to humiliate or degrade Richard and you have caused him significant psychological harm. Richard Spencer was a vulnerable victim isolated from his family and trapped financially. Cherie Spencer admitted coercive and controlling behaviour and three counts of assault occasioning actual bodily harm, which were charges covering a five-year period dating from the time the law on controlling and coercive behaviour was passed in 2015. Cherie Spencer was said to have been sobbing like a little bitch as she was led away to the cells. Now, I know this probably isn't the normal thing I would put out on the channel occasionally. I will cover something like this, but I thought that this was especially important. It's rare that women go to jail for this kind of behaviour, especially when they have children, which Sheree and Richard do, but this kind of thing happens far more often than people realise. There was a time when mental health was a taboo subject, just like male victims of domestic abuse, but this needs to be made aware of and people need to understand that there's nothing embarrassing about being co controlled, coerced and beaten. And if this kind of thing does happen to you, for example, then you mustn't suffer in silence. I know the police are bloody useless for the most part, but if you have undisputable evidence that it's happening, such as in Richard's case here, then they can't refuse to act and you can get yourself out of the situation. 